In this demonstration, I'm going to take some of the things that we learned about in my Illustrator Artistry course today. And this is a course that's going on now on Pattern Observer. And uh, we're doing a live session every Wednesday for five weeks. And in this whole course, we're talking about adding texture to your Illustrator artwork. And we're using various methods in Adobe Illustrator. And today, what we were talking about is using art brushes to add texture. And so these are a few quick things that you can take uh, from where we left off today. So what I have here is a leaf that I created in Adobe Fresco. Fresco vector brushes operate kind of like the blob brush in Illustrator. So you can create these nice filled shapes and they have a little bit of a natural edge to them. And I really love working with these. Then what you can do is bring them into Illustrator by using the send to Illustrator option. And that's up in the upper right hand corner. That is where all the export options are. Once you bring these vector paths into Illustrator, you can roughen their edges by using art brushes. And so this is what we focused on today. So if I select this one path here, we can see that we have a green fill and a green stroke. And this green stroke has this art brush applied. Now art brushes, stretch artwork along the length of the path. And this is a pretty long path because it's going all the way around the edge of this leaf. And so you can see that I have maybe more subtle texture here, but when I click on this really textural brush, we're gonna see even more texture. So using various size art brushes are a great way of dialing in exactly the amount of texture you want on your paths. And this is one of the things that makes working in Illustrator so great because you pretty much have endless options and they're all completely scalable. So this can be look exactly the same no matter how small or how big I make it. I can also go down to a really subtle brush here and just have just a tiny little extra bit of wobble. So these are very customizable. And if I just drag some of this artwork out here, you can see the art that I used to create it. It varies um, and it's great to just try and experiment with all of these. And this is something that we talked about in the course today. Another way of controlling the way these brushes look um, beyond what you're doing here in the brushes panel with the brushes setting is to just go up to the stroke panel and uh, boost up the stroke weight. This is like a multiplier. And so it doubles the width of the brush or triples the width of the brush. And that allows you to get even more texture out of this. So you have all these ways of dialing in just the amount of texture that you want. So that's all we're going to do talking about these brushes. Now I want to launch into just a few other suggestions. So these are quick things that you can do. We're going to use recolor artwork. We're going to use symbols and we're going to create a pattern. So we'll start with recolor artwork. Let me go ahead and take this leaf and group it. Then I'll hold option and make a copy of it. Option or alt just to drag out a copy there. Now I can make an alternate color scheme for this by going to the recolor artwork button here on the top control bar, clicking on this. And I'll move this aside. And here we can just unlink these colors so that we can move the circles around individually, getting different effects here. And then if you're not finding the color that you want, you can always double click on this and then you can really dial in by just using the color picker here. So I just want something a little bit more bright here. And if you don't see that change take place, just click again. Sometimes it takes a second to wake recolor artwork up. So if I found a color scheme that I like, I'm just going to click here on the artboard to exit recolor artwork. And now I have a new leaf. Now I'm going to move over here because the next thing we're going to do is make a pattern, but I'm going to start out by using symbols. And the reason I like to use symbols is because they just add a lot of flexibility. So let me go back and get this leaf here and I'm going to go ahead and create a symbol just by dragging it into the symbols panel like this. And I'll just leave all of these options as they are. These are just the default options and I'll click okay. 
So as you can see now, I have a few different leaf symbols here and these symbols will work really well in pattern editing mode if I wanted to make a pattern that way. But the downside of using pattern editing mode is that it can be kind of slow performance when you're working with art that has a lot of brushes applied to it or texture or that sort of thing. So I like to use just uh, the, the tried and true method of making a pattern um, out on the artboard. So let's do that. Here I have a square. This is going to be the size of my pattern tile and it's also providing a colored background for this pattern. And then I'm going to go up here to my transform panel and just show you that the width is 700 pixels and the height is 700 pixels. And so I want every single corner here to be exactly the same. So I'm going to start with this art here. This leaf here is on the upper left corner and we can see it's a symbol instance because it's got a little plus sign in the middle. So all I did here was just drag this symbol out here and um, place it over here. All right, now I'm going to delete that. Now what I want to do is go over into preferences. This is command or control K and make sure that you set up your keyboard increment so it's exactly the size of your square. So I've got 700 pixels here. What this allows me to do is to just take this um, leaf here, copy, paste in front. So that's command or control C, command or control F that places a copy directly in front of the original. And then I'll tap the right arrow on my keyboard to move this into place exactly 700 pixels to the right. So now I've got these in exactly the same position on the corners. Now let me go ahead and copy both of these down to the corners below. So this time I'm going to use the down arrow that's uh, to go 700 pixels down. But what I want to do as I do this is hold on to the option or alt key. So once I hold option and then tap the down arrow, I've made a copy and I've moved those two copies 700 pixels down. So now all of my corners are exactly the same. And then this is another leaf in a different color scheme here. And as long as it doesn't cross any of these edges here, it's going to be fine just sitting here in the middle. Now, when you make a pattern, I call it the old fashioned way, just by dragging art into the swatches panel to make a pattern fill swatch. One thing you really have to do, and let me make sure I don't have one here already. Yep, I don't. Okay, one thing you really have to do is, is place a no fill, no stroke bounding shape at the bottom of the stacking order of all of these shapes here. It's kind of like the reverse of a clipping mask. I'll go ahead and make a copy of this square and that that's just command or control C and command or control F and I'll just move this to the side to show you. I use my right arrow, it's moved over 700 pixels to the right. Now I'm going to make sure that I change this fill to none by clicking on the slash icon. So this is a no fill, no stroke bounding shape. It's going to function kind of like a clipping mask, but very important, it has to be at the back of the stacking order. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the back using command or control shift left bracket. And then I can nudge it back into place. You can also find those arranged commands right here in the properties panel. Now that I have all of my art with that no fill, no stroke bounding shape in the background, then I can just take this and I'm going to group it. I like to group it in case I drop it and I'm going to move it over here into the swatches panel and that's going to create my fill swatch. So now what I can do is create, I've got leaves everywhere. Let's create a rectangle and make sure that the fill is active and then click on this and fill it with your pattern. So once you create a pattern fill like this, the art that's contained within the pattern is all expanded. If I were to click and just expand, like right now, if I go into Command or Control Y, we don't see anything inside of this art. Um, but if I were to expand this, this is going to be crazy. Object expand. Okay, now if I go Command or Control Y, all of these leaves are expanded. That brush art is expanded. And this is what happens when you use pattern editing mode as well. Um, so one of the things I like about using symbols like this is, yes, that pattern art might 
be expanded. But if I edit this right here uh, using the symbols, then I can go back, drag this back into the panel, make another pattern fill swatch and still have the changes that I made. So one of the great things about using symbols is that you can easily make changes to things. So each one of these um, symbols right here, these instances are just identical copies of the symbol. If I go into the symbols panel, it looks like it's this symbol right here because everything's grouped together. I need to pull that apart. Okay. So now that I've selected this symbol, I want to go ahead and edit it. Um, so you can either just double click here. Um, you can click on the edit symbol link. You can double click here. However you do that, I'm going to double click here. Illustrator is going to take you into symbol editing mode. And now I've got this one symbol isolated and maybe I've decided, okay, well, yeah, I think that the stem is a little too rough. Let me go over to my brushes panel. I've got that stem selected. I can see I've got the really rough brush here. Let me go down to this brush and I like that better already. Maybe I even want to take the stroke weight down. It's already pretty low, but I'll take it down a little bit there. Um, and make this more subtle. Maybe this part right here, I want this to be more subtle. So I'm going to change the stroke weight to one point like that. And maybe I'll change the brush and see if I can get this to look a little bit more subtle. So you have all these ways of editing the symbol itself. And then when you exit by clicking over here, just on that arrow, you've exited symbol editing mode. And now you have that more subtle leaf on every one of your instances here. So then I can go back to the swatches panel, grab all of this art. I'm going to group it. <laughs> I always do. And then just drag it in. I don't even think it's necessary to group it. Um, and then go here and apply that pattern fill swatch. So we can see the difference between the pattern that I just created, maybe with more subtle red leaves, and then this one with a little bit more textural red leaves. I don't know if you can see this when I zoom in, but those red leaves are uh, the stems and this area is really textural. And over here, they're more subtle. So symbols allow you to make some really quick edits like that. So what we've been using is symbols and recolor artwork and brushes in Illustrator and just sort of piled all those techniques on top of each other in order to make working with art really fast and really flexible. So week one in Illustrator Artistry is all about adding texture by using art brushes. Next week, we're going to be talking about using bitmap TIFFs and place textures in Adobe Illustrator. This is a five week course at Pattern Observer. So go to patternobserver.com for more information. This is all happening in September and early October of 2021. So there's still time to join us and I hope you will. Thanks for watching.